Hi, it's Helen Gordon here, all the way from Australia. I'm the Handy Quilter Ambassador for the beautiful Sweet 16, and today we're doing a little segment called Short and Sweet. I'm going to step back a little bit to more of a beginner's level and look at the humble stipple. Sometimes it can be overlooked as a style, but get your stipple right and it is a very versatile uh, quilting pattern to do. It's based on the letter S, just like the word suggests, it starts with an S, um, which is a quite a simple shape that hopefully we've all achieved at elementary school. If we had to verbalise the letter S, it's actually part of a circumference of a circle, and then when we get to the bottom of that circumference, we swap over to the bottom of another circle, the same size, for another half circumference. It's a very complex verbal description. Luckily, we all know how an S goes. So let's have a look at it here on the Sweet 16. We need the glasses. So you can see stippling is based on that letter S. Let's just get rid of those threads. Oops. Oops. We'll keep going. And then we join another S onto the bottom of that S. until you're creating just a whole string of S's. And what happens in that pattern is that we automatically make each of those curvy shapes about the same size. That's just the natural way that we draw an S and that's what we need for our stippling, is that each of those round shapes are fairly consistent. They're by no means perfect, but there's that consistency that we're looking for, that repetition that makes it quite a pleasing and appealing pattern. You can see here the stippling is all going in one long line. We, we obviously don't want it to be continuously just going down and down our quilt. We want it to move across the quilt and move in amongst the applique, etc. Sometimes people have difficulty making that uh, stippling change direction. What I suggest is that you think about a gingerbread man. Okay, maybe I'm just hungry for a morning tea, but a gingerbread man, if you think about him, he's got little fat arms and little fat legs that sort of stick out in different directions. I'm not suggesting that you quilt a gingerbread man, but you think about the way that his arms and legs sort of go in different directions. That'll help you with your stippling shape. I'll show you here. So some people when they're doing their stippling might think about um, spaghetti or string, the way that it wiggles on a, on a plate when a bowl of spaghetti, or maybe um, jigsaw puzzle, the pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. Um, some people have told me they think of cow udders or dog bones, whatever it is that helps you remember and, and um, visualise that pattern in your mind is what you need to go with for your stippling. Some people's stippling is going to be uh, very swoopy and organic and have lots of movement to it. Other people's stippling can be quite smooth and flowing. You'll get a consistency in yours and that's all we're looking for. We're not looking for perfect, we're looking for consistency. Uh, when you do your stippling, what normally comes out of you as your first sample, we call that medium or default setting. It's usually a, a medium size that you first come out with. You then need to challenge yourself with, can I make it smaller or can I make it larger? So sometimes what you need to do is perhaps imagine um, the size of an Oreo cookie or something to make your quilting become larger as a circular shape or the size of a little lentil or something for a smaller shape. Let's try the larger size. And then for a smaller size, what I'm going to do is actually slow the machine down. Okay, any time that you feel your nose is getting closer to the job because you are trying to focus in on something quite small and intricate, you'll slow that machine down just a little bit. So I've gone from 45 to 35 on my um, speed controller here so that I'm getting um, nice small stitches but not microscopic stitches as I do my little stippling design. So 
Something that can happen when you're stippling is that you can be concentrating so hard that you actually forget to use your foot pedal and it starts to um, ease off and the stitches start to get bigger. This is something you need to watch for whenever you're quilting is the size of your stitches. If you see them getting too big, you need to um, speed your foot pedal up, but not speed up your hands. Okay, I'm gonna say that again. If the stitches are getting too big, speed up your foot pedal, but not your hands. The amazing thing is in free motion quilting is that our hands are actually in charge of the whole process. In any other time that you've been sewing on a domestic machine, doing piecing or dressmaking, you know, sort of normal sewing, um, your foot pedal is actually in charge of the entire activity. If you think about this for a minute, your foot pedal determines how fast the machine runs, how fast on a domestic machine the feed dogs take the job through, and that is regulating your stitch length as well. So all you're sewing on a domestic machine, your foot pedal has been in charge. In free motion quilting, this is the only time that we're sewing where our hands are actually the boss of the activity. Our hands actually determine what speed the quilt moves underneath the needle. It also determines the size of our stitches and the directions that we're going. So it's the first time our hands have been in charge of that entire process. And you thought you were sewing with your hands, you've always otherwise been sewing with your foot pedal being in charge of things. So when we're sewing on the Sweet 16 or any free motion quilting, you move your hands, the um, level of confidence they have to make that pattern, you then adjust your foot pedal and the speed to suit your hands, not the other way around. Okay, you don't change your hands to suit the speed of the machine. And that's quite a tricky concept to, to get, but it's something just to think about next time you're um, sitting at your Sweet 16. Another thing that can be quite tricky for people when they're um, getting used to their stippling is that sometimes you do have to stop and draw breath and take out a pin or smooth out your quilt. And then when you start up again, you'll often get that um, unattractive stitch, that big, big jump that looks quite ugly in amongst all your other smooth flowing stippling. What you need to do there is not move the quilt the split second that you put your foot on that pedal. Okay, put your, put, ease your foot onto the pedal let the needle start moving and then gradually move the quilt and pick up on that pattern that you had created in the stippling. What often happens, and I'll show you what can happen for some people, is they make that very first stitch and move that quilt straight away and get that ugly stitch in amongst their lovely stippling. So ease the pedal on and then pick up the movement and create that nice stippling pattern. And you need to practice that quite a few times. So stopping and starting and picking up the flow of that pattern again. So practice that quite a few times until you really cannot see where you stopped and started for your stippling. That makes for a really nice, nice finish look then. So now I'm going to show you a few other ways of how you can use your stippling. More than just um, surrounding an area or filling an area, we can actually use it to give us a lot more decorative detail in our quilting. So this little block here I've drawn, I'm going to do a design I call double up, where I do a fairly large stipple to fill the area and then work back into those areas with a small stipple. So combining the two different sizes to get quite a good impact, like a positive and a negative design.
I think you're starting to get the idea of it there, how I've used the two different size stippling, combining it in that block, and I will finish that area there, but otherwise leave that space empty, so you've got that positive and negative um, design element coming in. And it actually means I've done half as much work in that block because there's a whole heap of area that hasn't been stitched, uh, but it's got way more impact than if that had just been a block full of stippling. So something to think about there, about halving your actual work, but giving you double as much impact of design. This design here I call Stack of Rocks, and it uh, uses a, a stippling design that fills an area, and then we come back on ourselves and close off that stippling. I'll show you what I mean. So you can see there I worked that design into a, a, a wavy shape. That certainly could be worked into a straight shape. It also looks lovely to create like a seed pod idea when you want just that one single row of bubbles. It's actually a lovely way to make a row of bubbles in that stack of rocks um, style there. Now I'm going to show you one called contours in another block over here. Now it's still based on the stipple idea, but we start with an exaggerated, um, overly flowing line and then we repeat it to create a contour, like a, looking at a contour map. So once I've put my first pass in, I'm then going to um, go parallel, but allowing myself to go um, wide sometimes and then very close to the line, then wide, then close and getting that exaggeration of that line happening. You can see there they're not actually parallel, they're actually wide and skinny and I love the effect that gives. It's more exaggerated look, it's got far more movement and, and fluid flow to it. I love, I love that one. And it's still based on a stipple. One more design I'm going to share with you. And this one is an elongated stipple, so it's a very long shape in between each of the curves. This can be um, created in a vertical format or horizontal, whichever way um, feels better for you. I like to work in this more ver vertical format. starts to look a bit like um, pond water as well. So 
So there you go, that's quite a few examples of stippling, how we can go from medium, small to large, and all different ways you can incorporate those into different quilting designs. Um, there's a lot you can do with the stippling, so have fun with those, get your practice going, and you'll be doing really fine on your Sweet 16. I'll be seeing you very soon. See you later. Mm -hmm.